weekend trade lined up this weekend? Hello, fellow traders everywhere. Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club, with your midday market update for Friday, the 27th of January. Can you believe this month is practically over? And we'll be looking at, we're going to change things around a little bit today, but we're going to be looking at three stocks that are on the move and on our radar. We're also going to be looking at how to find winning trades and how you can use Market Club to do that. Key thing, key lesson to learn is don't fight the market, move with the market. What we're looking at right now is a contract for copper. It's the March contract. And what I wanted to show you is the fact that I've already put our trade triangles in. And I'm just going to draw a couple of things on here that I noticed that I want to share with you. One, you've got a really, really nice base uh, in this market. So this is the big energy field we talk about, how we have that energy field the fact that we've broken over this area here. You can see our monthly trade trial came in at 376. Market's currently trading at 388. So making money on that, a nice move up. Copper tends to be an indicator for economic events. We're looking to go to four, possibly even higher, uh, possibly even testing the 420 level, which takes us back to, to these levels right back here. So as they say, the trend is your friend. The trend right now in copper is up. We may see some more consolidation, but generally speaking, we're up for the week, and that's always a good thing, and we have a plus 90 in our trade triangle. So let's take everything off the screen. We're going to change things around. Uh, we normally go with the S&P 500, first of all, but we'll, we'll, we'll catch up with that one. Looking at crude oil, we can see right away on our trade triangles, plus 55, trading range. But what's going on with crude oil, really? So this is what we're looking at. Let's go to three months. You can see that we've sort of, for the last three months, we sort of just had this big meandering type deal. We still think this is the possibly a right shoulder of a head and shoulders move. Let me just scope that in for you so you can get a sense of what we're talking about. We think this is going to be, we're moving around like this and like this, and we're going to see this market take off on the upside. One thing to look at right here is the 104 level. We talked about the 104 each week. That's a key level in my mind. These, that's the tops we are looking at right here. So if we've got to break over 104, but the, on a closer basis, we can actually draw it. It's kind of like a trend line right here. And I would say if we get over the 102 level, we may be seeing this market move up. I don't know what's going to happen, but you can see the indecision here with these kind of doji lines, the hammer bottom. We sort of been going like this. And it looks to me like we're trying to make that turn to go higher. We haven't got there yet. We keep seeing some selling pressure coming in. But the formation's certainly here. I wouldn't want to see it go below the lows that we see here. And But it's tended to do exactly what we want. We said the 98 level should hold, and that's pretty much what has happened. Um, so let's see how that plays out. But we've got triangles that are mixed. Long-term positive from 100.59. The weekly is down from 97.93. And the daily is mixed. So it gives you that trading range area. So let's clear the screen just very quickly. Go to the bottom of the chart where we have our Williams percent R. And you can see it's just sort of choppy there. Not a lot of volume coming on the downward swings. More volume on, I think, the upward moves. So let's see how that plays out. Going to our next market, we're going to be looking at DeVries. DeVries has, was a big move today. It's minus 100. It's down 7.73%. And this is what I want to show you with the trade triangles, is the fact that I'll scope this out a little further, let's say six months. And you can see we had a trade triangle right here that's a weekly. But I want to go even further than that. And let's go one year. And there's the monthly that kicks in. So again, if we just take everything off the screen, just leave the monthlies, you can see we caught the trend pretty much all the way down from 51.34. If you're a long trader, we're currently trading at 36. Big down move today, as they over 7%. And um, it looks as though it's going to potentially continue. I don't know, but the trend certainly in this stock is down. And play it accordingly. It's minus 100, strong downward trend. The monthly, weekly, and daily are all negative, so that's the way to play it. Let's go to our next market, and that's the euro dollar. This is an interesting stock, interesting currency right now. As you can see, we've had this move uh, down, this counter trend move. Longer term, the trend in the euro dollar is down. The dollar is up. The euro dollar is down. Longer term, right now, short term. The euro dollar is up. One thing I would like to look at right here, a couple of things really quickly. I'm going to put my illustrator on, and that is the lows that occurred right here. And that would be somewhere around the 3270 level, 
130, well, 131.40, 131.50. So if we look at where we are at, 131.78. So this is where the market should probably be running into some resistance right around these levels. Uh, the other thing I'd like to see us do is uh, look at our Fibonacci numbers and see what we can do with that. And let's for that, we'll just go to a Fibonacci tool right here. Go to the highs. That's the major high, obviously. Stretch it down. And, yep, 132.43 is basically uh, a area of resistance. Uh, that would be 38%, then 34 and so on and so forth. So I think right around these levels, between 32 and 34, we're going to have a hard time getting this market to go much higher. That's my gut feeling. That's the way I would play this market. But right now, it's 70, which is an emerging trend. It hasn't emerged into a bull trend, but it hasn't it hasn't started going back down again. Give it some time. So let's clear this off the screen. Go to our next market. Next market we're going to look at is gold. Now, gold is up again today. It's up $15, on oh, 0.9%. And uh, you can say, wow, this is looking pretty good. But I'm not so sure. I'm not, you know, our, our, we've been very lucky with our monthly trade trends. They've been very accurate in predicting where the market's going to go. This is our first buy signal right here. Boom, 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 boom. And I think you want to see right now we don't have that monthly in there. We have a 1532 negative right now. I would rather, sounds crazy, I know, I'd rather buy it higher knowing that it's going high and have the assurances from our trade triangles that it's going high than try to pick where we are right now. This is all Fed speak right here. Obviously, we're sharply higher for the week, and we are going to close out the week on a very positive note for this market. Had the Fed not come in, this market probably would have drifted down. So I'm saying it's one intention. But if we put a weekly chart on here very quickly, you can do this with Market Club. Boom, there's the weekly. It's up for the week. We're up 3.92%. Now, the question is, are you trading to make money or just because you want to trade gold itself? Because there's a lot of stocks right now that are performing a lot better than gold, and that's the bottom line. So let's go back to the portfolio, and let's see. Our next market is going to be Newell Rubber Made. NWL is the symbol, plus 100. It's up 6.3%. That's what I mean. You're up not even nine, not even 1% even in gold, and you're up 6% in a stock. Where would you rather put your money? Think about it. So here we are. We're looking at the market. And that's a daily a weekly chart. We're going to go back to a daily chart, of course. And you can see if we put our, well, we have to scope it in a little further here because there's our monthly that came in right here. And we came in at, on uh, this is a, on the uh, 3rd of November at 1598 to be a buyer. And of course, here we are at 1849, just acting really, really well. This has got a large base of below it. You can see, look at this huge base. Again, this gets back to finding stocks that have big bases or big energy fields, as we like to call them. And this is the energy field we see for Newell Rubbermaid. This is going to, if this closes towards close to 19, maybe 1875, I think it's an excellent trade for the weekend trade, the 52-week rule. Remember that. And let's just draw the line across here. And you can see how it moved over there. And it's really looking very good. So here's the here's what we would see is the potential head and shoulders. And the this is the energy field. And uh, by the way, I did say this is an excellent weekend trade. It actually doesn't qualify. It's not a 52-week high. So that's the that's the key to remember. You want to go to the 52-week highs. You know, that's how you do it with our smart scan technology right here. You click there, it'll show you all the 52 week highs. We may have, if we have time today, we'll go through them. But let's clear the screen and go to our next market. Next market we're looking at is going to be the Reuters Jeffries CRB Commodity Index. We've been talking about this index, about how it's going to bring inflation back, how it's going to do this. We talked about the 16 level, 316 level as a key level. We've obviously went over that. Look how it found support today. And that, to me, is, again, you've got this incredible, what we consider an energy field, not quite as dynamic as the other ones, but it's building for that. And here you just have this right here, here, and here. You clearly broke through this level right around this 16 level. And I think any, ch any chance you get to buy this is a good move. I think we're going to see the market go higher. So let's see how that plays out. Let's clear the screen again, go to our next market. And uh, lots going on in these markets. And this is, you know, this is, we get back to this. So always remember, don't fight the market. 
move with the market. That's the key thing. When people have strong opinions, when you're a trader, if you have a strong opinion, sometimes that's very, very good, but for most people, it's very, very bad. And when the market changes direction, you have to be flexible enough to change with the market. So let's look at the S&P 500. Uh, it's not acting too well today, but it's still a plus 90. We've had a very good performance. However, for the week, it looks as though this market is going to close out the week perhaps lower. And you can see right here, it, it's the first time in three weeks we've actually had a, perhaps a lower close, but the market's not over with yet. We still have several more hours left to trade, almost three, le three hours left to trade. But I think you want to pay close attention. This market looks like it wants to go higher. Plus, we're looking at individual stocks now. That's the key. Not looking at the market in general. Some of these stocks are actually performing extremely well if you know how to pick them. And you can use our smart scan tool again to figure those out and find those winning stocks. So let's go back to the market. Look at silver. Uh, silver is a positive day today. And you can see for the week, we've had four weeks in a row. The silver's acted very, very well. It's plus 70. Emerging trend, it hasn't gotten in there. Depending on what tools you're using, uh, if we put our weekly trade triangles, you see we had a weekly trade triangle right here as a buy at uh, 10th of January at 3018. This is our intermediate term trading strategy for silver. Use the weeklies for timing, excuse me, the weekly for trend and the daily for timing. We've talked about that. You can see that in our, uh, you'll see that actually in our. World Cup portfolio strategy, how we use that in the various metals and so forth. So let's close this up, go to our last market, that's the dollar index. And the dollar index took it on a chin. Uh, and I'm going to go to the daily because I want to show you this. We talked about this before. I'm going to go out. And we talked about this, this trend line that was very, very important. Uh, we thought it was very important anyway. And we just drew the trend line from the lows right here all the way through here. And it just really intersected. Uh, actually, we go right here. It just intersected, and it just did not act very, very well. So again, this is not a good sign for the dollar. I think uh, it looks as though we're going to see this market go higher. 81.50 is our target zone. We go. We definitely got our target zone on that. So we've come back down. We had a signal to be in this market, be out of the market completely because we've got our weekly at 79.51. We're 78, almost one full point below that. The dailies kicked in. Only the weekly is positive on this, and uh, only the monthly rather is positive on this, but uh, that's what we look at. So let's take a quick look. Let's go to, we've done all the stocks we covered, all the markets we want to cover. Let's go to Smart Scan. And this is something that we are actually, it's great right now, but we're actually improving uh, all the time. So here's the Smart Scan. If you want to see 52 week highs, just simply click here, and you'll see we have 317 of them. I'll show you how I use this facility. So 317 you see right here, but that's too many to look through. So I want to give some criteria. I want to basically look at this market and only want to basically, let me just pull this down, and I only want to look at uh, prices that are, let's say, uh, less than uh, $50. And also the daily volume is $2 million, and I only want to look at stocks that have, let me scope this over here, that are on US exchanges. If I was in Canada or if I was in Australia, I would look at just for those exchanges. But I'm in the US, so I just want to look at US exchanges. And I say, OK, I've got the criteria less than 50, greater than 2 million in volume. I want to see his bar charts. But I actually, when I look, I'm going to look at it as a symbol list. And I'll tell you the reason why. So I scan here, boom. And it's taking this down to 15, very, very measurable. The first one that comes up here is a stock that's uh, Solucia. Not even, not even close to what that is, but uh, you can see um, 60 million shares of Trader, which is a heck of a lot of shares. Uh, QLogic, 18, that's looking very good, up 5.97%. Uh, this stock, by the way, is up 39%, huge. Uh, but what you can do if you don't like that look, you can go into look at it in bar charts or candlestick charts. Let's go to candlestick charts, scan again. We should get the same 15 stocks, but we'll just look at those visually, uh, which I like to do, of course. And you can see this one, boom, big pickup, huge pickup, as a matter of fact. I would bet you our trade triangles are definitely positive on this. Let, in fact, let's just take a look. We can do that if you click on the blue box here. 
and takes us to the chart and we'll put our we'll see where our trade triangles come in uh, and there they are. 1790, the market's trading at 27. Now, isn't that the type of thing you'd like to use with our trade triangle technology? You can do that using our smart scan, our trade triangles, and plus 100, great trade. You would have made money. But that's the power of Market Club and the trade triangle technology and our smart scan. Hey, this is Adam Hewison. Great uh, chatting with you. I'll have an update for you to tomorrow, and we should be able to get this show on the road and have some exciting tools to trade with next week. I'll see you tomorrow for the weekend update. Have a great trading day and make it profitable. Thanks for stopping by. Every success.